Welcome to the Final Frontier. Yeah! In space. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's like a very vacation-y intro song, but they're never on vacation. They're always working. Even when they go on vacation, they end up having to work. Sometimes they have leave, but then bullshit happens. And they end up having to work on leave, you know? It's like yeah. when you put in an out of office, but you have to take your phone with you, and they're still it's emailing bullshit, you. dude. <laughs> when, does, when does summer begin again? What date is that? In in general, like yeah, in real, I isn't it like May, June? Isn't it summer now? It's it's uh, hot girl summer right now, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that means. Wait, what? Is that is what? hot what? girl summer? What? Uh, what? Hello? What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the? Okay, what the hell is hot girl summer? I'm gonna look it up right now. It's a thing. Hey everybody, welcome to Newbie Star Trek. We're a Star Trek podcast. Sarah, what's Hot Girl Summer? <laughs> <laughs> My name's Marvin. I'm here with Ricardo and Dan. Hi, everyone. Uh, hello. If you guys know what Hot Girl Summer is, <laughs> tweet us. Tweet us. Let us know what it is. We're, we're a bunch of boomers. Please DM me on OnlyFans <laughs> if you know what Hot yeah. Girl Summer is, please. <laughs> so Dan can partake in, in the hot summerness. Yeah, I need uh, to know. I need no. to know the hot stress. Oh boy, oh boy! If you're a new listener, welcome. Uh, I know, I know, some people trickle in uh, from other various avenues, and if this is your first listen of the episode, thanks. But also, maybe you go back to the beginning. Unnatural selection is a weird place to start. Uh, so you know, but, but if you're if big, you're, if you're a big Star Trek nerd, it kind of doesn't matter for you because yeah. you should know all these episodes. It's true. But if you're not a big Star Trek nerd, no, go back to the beginning. If, if this is your first Don't time. Don't worry. We'll you know guide what? you well. <laughs> you, you know what? Do what you want to do. That's also true. Also, Don't, you can seriously, do what you want. Don't let the government yeah, tell you actually, what you do. Why the hell are you letting Marvin yeah, tell you, you anything can, about yeah, anything? You can, you can turn the podcast off. Yeah. You know, you can do whatever you, you want. You know what? Started from the end, listen to it backwards. <laughs> yeah, we don't. Yeah. Made, but look. yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's pretty good. Uh, anyway, uh, if, you, if you've been a longtime listener, thanks for continuing to listen. Uh, if you'd like to help us out, you can give us a review on Apple Podcasts. Uh, that helps a lot, it turns out, Yeah. in terms of rankings. Uh, you on this good thing. reviews, bad reviews, medium well reviews, medium rare reviews. We'll take them all. <laughs> it was a rare pleasure knowing you all. Yeah. Medium rare. <laughs> Digimon's dub was pretty underrated, I'd say. <laughs> Oh, that was a magical time in anime dubs where sometimes the American dubbers would just be like, fuck it. We'll just put in our own shit. <laughs> yeah. Like they, they, they fucking didn't care. Like the dub of dual monsters is bananas. And the dub of uh, Samurai Pizza Cats is a complete rewrite of the show. So, oh, well, I'd, I'd say that predates the era of Digimon, though. That's true. That's true. But like that it was a. It, the long era. I don't even long. know what Digimon is, dude. So that's fine. It's like a Pokemon. But they were the champions. I, I don't even know what a Pokemon is, dude. Um, oh, it's okay. Like, it's um, <laughs> uh, Pokemon were champions, Ricardo. It's oh, a okay, Pikachu. Yeah. It's okay. A Pikachu. Oh, Pikachu. I know Pikachu. It's a, it's a, it's a Pikachu. You put it oh, in okay. your pocket, um, and they're your slaves. Oh my and god! And you and you force them to cage fight Ooh. for your pleasure. Oh, like but that cock, also cock increases fights. your friendship. Yeah, they're cockfights. Oh, okay, okay. All These right. are sanctioned cockfights by children. That's what you should have said, so. You should say that it's just cockfight. Like, once you turn 10 or 12, depending on what you're looking at, you, yeah. you get cast out into the world yeah. with only a small animal to defend you. Yeah. You know that Monty Hellman movie, Cockfighter? Mm -hmm. It's just like that, but with children. Oh. Yeah, so. <laughs> and if you beat up enough animals, you get money from the other kids. Come yeah, you steal their lunch money. Yeah. Oh. And that's how the economy works mm -hmm. <laughs> in this world. I get behind that. <laughs> I once saw a comic that theorized that every trainer you meet on like out in the world is like a failed like father who left his family, <laughs> you know, to go uh, become a trainer, but never came back because they didn't make it to be a master. Yeah. Anyway, then, uh, uh, unnatural selection. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pokemon is a type of unnatural selection. <laughs> oh, well, especially when you're doing that EV <laughs> shit. I mean, yeah. IV shit. 
You motherfuckers. EV, I mean, uh, whatever. EV, evolutionary values. Okay. I think, yeah. Or experience felt. Whatever. Unnatural selection. You know. What's well, Dr. This, Pulaski's this, nature? This is, yeah. a na- this is an episode of TNG, the episode seven of the second season. Uh, and it aired on January 30th, 1999. So right now we're going to go. Oh, 89. Did I say 99? 89. We're not partying like that yet. No, no, no. We're we're not we're not princing yet. So we're gonna go around the sun so we can go back in time and Dan can tell us what's going on. Hell yeah. Zow. There isn't a whole lot going on in, on that around that time. Oh, okay, uh, let's go back then. <laughs> <laughs> now, it'll just be a quick a quick little jaunt around the sun. Uh, I'll start off with something slightly dark. Ted Bundy, noted American serial yep. killer, was executed by E chair in the great state of Florida. <laughs> at the age of 42. chair. You know, yes. you know, um, in the Bundy cinematic universe, <laughs> Ted, Bund- Ted Bundy is Al Bundy's brother. <laughs> wow, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, Kevin Feige's the, yeah. the, uh, the Kevin Bundy, Feige. Bundy. <laughs> Bundy verse. <laughs> yeah. Oh god, they were so lucky to get Kevin Feige to shepherd the Bundy verse. Oh my god. Yeah. So like the oh brothers, and you don't know that you're like, oh, that's Bundy, El Bundy oh for your old children. The, the storytelling is set yeah. in, t- in yeah. place far in advance. If, if you look, told. if you look at the 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 the, the series, you're like, oh, it makes sense why yeah, his yeah. brother it all fits was a, together. You why know? his brother was a goddamn serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> Where the fuck is my Bud movie? <laughs> That's true. Anyway, oh my God. Uh, on the 25th of January, Michael Jordan scored his 10,000th point in the fifth oh. season of his NBA career. Okay. Pretty cool. Um, and finally, this is the last bit. It's it's pretty light today or this week. Uh, Jodie Foster and Dustin Hoffman won Golden Globes for their performances in Rain Man, which was still top of the box office at the time. Oh, okay, wow. it was it was fairly new, but it won awards right away. <laughs> And that's all. Mm. This all right. time. Cool. Well, we're back from our trip around the sun. We're back. So, you know, sometimes not much happens. You know and what? Sometimes. Speaking of Rain Man, you know who would make a good captain on a on a Star Trek ship? Tom Cruise. Mm. Mm. He Come would on, make dude. for a very specific type of captain. Like wait, wait like 10 more years and like a like a, a gray haired Tom Cruise. I mean, he's gray haired now. He just dyes his hair. That's so. true. <laughs> That's true. Uh, like, but, I can't imagine him like at any age not trying to jump into action himself. I mean, well, he, this a, Captain well, Wood, he'd jump into. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, he's Kirk. Yeah. He, he would not the, be diplomat. The Kirk type of captain. Yeah. He wouldn't yeah. be. No, Kirk Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> the Kirk cinematic universe. <laughs> it's all the Kirks. Kirk Cobain. <laughs> No, no. This is just word association. Yeah, no. <laughs> That's not even the same word. <laughs> it's not even close. <laughs> then you might as well, if you're going to just think Cobain that in, you're throwing, you're throwing Kurt, Kurt Vonnegut. Kurt Vonnegut, you're, yeah. You're throwing Kermit the Frog. Yeah. You're throwing all this oh, shit. Like, then, it's you know, let's not bring out. Out. No, let's not bring, let's not bring the it's now, be, now It's now, see, look what you've done. Now Star Trek is part of the Muppetverse. Yeah. Well, it's all yeah. part of the... Uh, Kermit the Frog. Oh, as he a would make captain. Yeah, yo, he'd be so no, good. No, no, actually, be a sick. Captain, not a captain. <laughs> no, he wouldn't. Be, he wouldn't be a captain. He would be like someone in engineering, because then he'd like when something <laughs> goes wrong, it's like ah. Oh, I oh. imagine Fozzie in engineering. Like Fozzie's yeah, Fozzie's like, pretty good for engineering. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're yeah, that he, animal just for the joke. Yeah, <laughs> animal. Animals the the teleport uh, engineer. Although most people would just uh, slot animal in his wharf. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, just give. <laughs> I'm sure there's already tons <laughs> of art of it. So. No, no. Imagining Animal with his arms flailing, but he's holding a bottle. <laughs> That's how he fights. <laughs> oh, man. Speaking of captains and who would make a captain, uh, if you get a chance, watch um, The Wrath of Man. Because mm. our own, our version of the beautiful Star Trek feature involves Jason <laughs> Statham and uh, he's in that. He's amazing. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah. You're yeah, like, oh, I could see that. You watch the movie and you're like, I could see him being Kirk and just fucking roundhousing people and telling people to fuck themselves. Yeah. yeah. So all these captains, so you have, you yeah. have Jason Statham captain. Yeah. You have the captain cinematic universe where you have the, 
bring together all the cast. Yeah, yeah, Tom like Cruise and into Conrad the, the Fog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They'll all meet up. Mm-hmm. Level, level round table. Well, actually, meeting. I guess dude, it started off oh, as like dude, alternate dude. cards and then it oh. just veered off into like captains in general. Denzel Washington would make a great captain. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Denzel yeah, Washington definitely. makes a lot of great things. Everything, really. Yeah. 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 He's, he's, you know. But, yeah, have you, you know, tried Denzel Washington's aioli? No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, you, you know who who never got to become a captain, Tasha Yar. Ricardo, could you please tell Oof. us what happened in this episode? Hashtag she fucking died too soon. <laughs> the Tasha Yar, it's been Tasha Yar cinematic universe. <laughs> uh, it seems like new to me. Um, so this episode is very interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We discovered early on. I want to say the first season mm-hmm. that this show, look, I don't want to talk shit about them, but the people doing the makeup, poof, they're, <laughs> they're horrible at old, old, old people makeup. The funny part is apparently the producer, Maurice Hurley, ended up being like, no, this time it was good though. And it's like, no, sir. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, I will I will admit that it is better than that first time with, you know, Benjamin Button Man. Yes, they're not melting. Yes, but you instead could still we only <laughs> have a flesh-colored Yoda without the ears. <laughs> and you and for people who are already like a little bit older, they just put some gray splotches in their face, and that means they're older now. So that's that's how yeah. we do that. So the episode starts off, and we're of course there's something. Somebody's well, hate- they're on their way to rendezvous yeah. with something. Yeah. Of course. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then they receive a distress signal. Yeah. And the signal is weak. Yep. Oh, it's <laughs> always weak. They go you think, find it. You think they have <laughs> warp warp they have warp technology, but they can't get a decent fucking video signal? No. <laughs> no. They can fly past the speed of light. They could see ahead to know where not to fly because they'll <laughs> run into a star. They have that technology. That's but true, the, actually. But the Verizon yeah. guy still fucking, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? <laughs> That's fucked they, up. That's fucked uh, up. They, which they're tells using you, old codex. That's which tells all. you that uh, Time Warner and Spectrum uh, run the uh, telecommunications department in the, oh, in the universe. They'll, they'll still be around, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They won't be our sponsor. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so the episode starts off, and coincidentally... Um, he is talking, uh, to, uh, counselor Troy, bam, see, mm-hmm. getting better at it. Mm-hmm. Uh, hey. and he's talking to her about like, what does she, what does she, what does she feel about the doctor? And you're like, oh boy, of course this is going to be a doctor episode. God mm-hmm. damn it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they get the distress call and, um, but so they're talking about whether, uh, her commitment to her job will interfere with actually her, like. Well, is it a bad thing, basically? It's that she's so committing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Foreshadowing. It's funny because the conversation goes, takes the point of, um, oh, Picard asks, hey, how is she as a doctor? Deanna Troy goes, she's, I've never met a more dedicated physician. Yeah. And I've met Beverly. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so she's basically saying Beverly's Beverly is shit. trash by comparison. Well, well, it's uh, true. Yeah. It's true. Well, definitely like, not dedicated look. to medicine as much. I mean, we've observed that ourselves and said, yes. you know, and pretty much that. And this episode will actually point out the way Pulaski handles handles a viral issue versus how fucking Beverly did. Yeah. yeah. Whereas like Beverly- I was about to say, this is another goddamn like plague virus episode. Yeah. <laughs> but this one's probably the best we've had so far. Yes, it feels really dire and like handled correctly. Yeah, yeah they actually like act as though it's a threat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. instead of being like, "Well, it's going to spread anyway," you know, like, yeah. <laughs> herd immunity. Let's let's do it. Let's not, let's not wear masks. <laughs> oh, idiots. Uh, so so they get a hailing frequency. It's, it's they it's sketchy as shit, right? As always. Yes. Um, but. Uh, you, you're right. She he, she does bring up like the fact that like, look, I don't want to say this, but in in the show's universe, I think they kicked her off. I think they were like this. <laughs> they're like, how many fucking out- outbreaks and close to death have we been? I think yeah, we, we let we, her go. Yeah, we didn't have that long a voyage. Yeah, <laughs> you let three pandemics yeah. happen. Yeah. She, and then Picard's like, because b- before the show starts, Picard's been the captain of the, of this 
of this. Yeah, he's uh, been the captain. He's right? not newly the captain. No, no, okay. he, he, no, he, he, like just started becoming the captain. Really? When the show began, yeah. Okay. Like, like he was only captain for probably like a week. Like the way they talk about it at Encounter and Farpoint, it's like, oh, we still haven't gotten all of our staff members yet. Mm. You know, so like the Enterprise D has just launched essentially. Yeah. yeah. So D. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah. so um, they they're on their way to look this thing. But anyway, in my head, I think she, they're like they're like, dude, she's been here for fucking like couple fucking months and like she's almost killed us how many times i think we yeah. had to give her the boot and she fucking spawned this piece of shit uh, <laughs> they're like i say we go back in time kick her in the crotch so she doesn't foul the earth with the shit like this guy um <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh boy i went too far um but not for wesley um <laughs> <laughs> so so the, they get the, the, the distress call and they're like all right let's figure out what the what, what's up and and they're only receiving messages, but they can't. They're like no one's no one's listening when they yeah. So they they're talking, and then no one they can't get a hold of anybody. There's nobody in the other end. It's like a weird message, which is like oh, yeah, yeah. It sounds that's, that's, like um, it sounds like the old man from Up. <laughs> um, uh, which is a which is a, not a good movie. Um, and then. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, just real quick, Ricardo. What, what do you have? Any Pixar movies that you enjoy? He likes I Incredibles, like, I think. I like The Incredibles. I like the first Toy Story. Uh, I hate Cars. Cars is the worst. Well, he, well, yeah, you know. And I cars love Cars. One is okay. I love Cars in real, like I like all Cars. Too. I like vehicles, spaceships, mm. anything that transports buses, airplanes, <laughs> transportation. But the goddamn movie Cars is a piece of shit dude <laughs> all right well, why would you those cars transport no one yeah and they talk yeah yeah how do they fuck to have other little cars we don't know they don't explain that in the movie that's why it sucks um so just the car fucking scene <laughs> i could have at least explained it um uh. and so so they they get this they get this distress call and they finally like approach approach the ship and they're like hey there's no life signs in, in this goddamn ship Mm-hmm. And they're like, all right, well, let's do the old remote remote into it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they team view into their yeah. That yeah, they remote they remote desktop into yeah. the yeah the land yeah. tree into yeah, the, into which is a ship. fascinating concept. I I, I, I mean, they had it. Yeah, they had it going on eighty nine. That's like very you know like uh th- that slice of futurism there was totally on point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool. Good for them. Um, and then and then he has to. Um, Captain Picard has to go into his quarters because he doesn't want anybody knowing his password, which mm. is password but 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 sixty nine. <laughs> um, but no, actually, his password is Omicron Omicron Alpha Yellow Daystar two seven. So, oh, did you remember that? Oh, yeah, wow. yeah I remember wow. it. Yeah. Oh, oh, so now I could unlock his computer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's so, cool yeah so he, he it's funny because he he just goes away to like say it and then comes back in he's well, realistic yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah but he never like just why can't he just punch it in you know what i mean it's really weird that's also true like yeah. like yeah, i know it's the future but you don't have to say out loud every command to your computer i know but dude, it's know. very yeah. it's very video friendly yeah, yeah it's good for scripting and it's good for for visual content. Yeah, just just yeah. tell the computer what to do. You have to yeah. tell it though. Um, and then and then so they uh they unlock the thing and they're able to to remote into the into the the cameras in there, and they see that everyone's dead, dude. Mm-hmm. Everyone's dead, dude. And everyone's just laying there, like oh yeah. boy. Um, and everyone and you old notice and dead. Yeah, you notice real quick that they're all old. Yeah. And so they zoom in on like people's faces and they're they're they've one of them looks like boris karloff looks like frankenstein <laughs> like I zoom in too. and i'm like and i'm like oh wow like that they got boris karloff but now i think boris karloff is <laughs> dead by then um <laughs> no it's his body it's his so body that- <laughs> he uses his body <laughs> and so basically polanski like scans him uh remote scans him and he and she's like they died of natural causes mm. and they're like what the hell what the dickens um <laughs> And then Polanski, Roman Polanski. <laughs> God, God damn it. God damn it. <laughs> we had to get it out of our system, right? Uh, I think you did. The, yeah, let me, let me just get it out of my system. Roman Polanski, you, Roman Polanski. R- Roman yeah, Ricardo Polanski. needs to get Roman Polanski out. Yeah, Roman Polanski. Full disclosure, Ricardo's uh, enter, self-typed entered name in our little podcast session here is 
Roman Polanski. Roman Polanski. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so Polanski, Polanski, um, says, um, so basically she's like, first of all, all these d- dudes, natural causes. And then Pol- Polanski says, um, they, you know, they died of, died of old age. And then somebody, I think somebody says, I used to know one of them. And they, they were like 45 or something. Is that- oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Riker says, uh, the captain's my age. Oh yeah, so, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, though? Yeah, it's yeah. kind of weird because on a lot of the close-ups of the old, of the dead crew, like there's like additional like warty crust that you wouldn't yeah. normally see on just an old person. Yeah. Don't worry about it. I thought I thought it was I thought it was I thought it, it was like, like a fungal growth. Yeah, yeah. I thought like I thought they had like uh, I don't want to look. I had, I thought they had like leprosy or something, you know, at first. I, I think I think what it is is, is that the makeup artists for Star Trek think yeah, that when know. you we get old, yeah. you just get old and gross <laughs> and covered in shit. Yeah. And this is like, oh, you're old. You have sores and fungal growth. Yeah. <laughs> just 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 glue some cornflakes to their face. <laughs> yeah. And it looks horrible. Uh, this this makeup job is horrible. It's pour not some realistic oatmeal. All. <laughs> yeah, um, it's oatmeal. Yeah. Uh so they get the like the logs, the captain logs from the from the ship, and they go to the conference room, and they're they're talking about uh, what happened to them, and it looks like they might have been a course, course of virus, and th- they basically said, oh, all the whole the whole crew had a uh, a exam a few months ago or weeks ago, mm-hmm. and they were all fine. So it's something happened recently, mm-hmm. and then they they noted something. Well, Polanski notices no, notices something. He's like one of them was treated for the Lusian flu. A few mm-hmm. days before this, mm-hmm. uh, but that's it. That's really all the things. Mm-hmm. Quick aside and here: Yes, if such a thing as the Lusian flu exists, like what are its symptoms? Because people were really, really like, uh, like surprised when Picard acted like, like just generally sick. It's like, yeah. why are you experiencing symptoms? Yes, it's the future. Yeah, and, there are and no it's like symptoms in the future. I know, and also <laughs> like, why is there a flu? Why is there a flu if there's no Well, it's a delusion sickness. flu. It's one of those super villain viruses we discussed last oh, week. Oh, fuck, dude. Yeah, it's apparent. So, they so, call it a rhinovirus. So, it's basically like a space cold. So, But we said there's no colds. You know, Ricardo, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> someone said, so, yeah, someone I've, taken, said that. I've someone gone wrong right, enough this on this was... goddamn podcast without <laughs> saying, I hope somebody got fired for that blunder. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so uh, so they're like, um, and the, okay. There's another huge thing. It's the thing is, is that like going ahead just slightly. We, we'll get back to it, but going ahead just slightly. The, the whole premise of this episode with the science is genetic laboratory shit. Yeah, and in the Star Trek universe, the genetic sh- experimentation is explicitly forbidden. <laughs> so, really? Yeah, but this episode, granted, it turns out it's because. In this episode, this was written before later episodes where they were like, "Oh yeah, we'll just um say that's fine." Yeah, mm-hmm. like we'll 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 like retroactively say you can't do genetic engineering anymore. Oh my! But God. This, was, this was written before that, so I don't know. If genetic <laughs> engineering is prohibited, how they eradicate diseases that like you know older diseases? How Again, do they go yeah, about yeah, that? Shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> If the, I just was just curious if there actually was an explanation. No. no. All right, the all explanation right. is is medicine because, because we told you to. <laughs> um, so so um so medicine then they're like good. they noted something. They noted one that one of them had the flu and two that the last stop was at the Darwin station. Funny name for the station, huh? huh? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And so they um they're like, all right, well, we got to go check out this ship. You know, I mean, the, the, the Darwin station, we got to go see what's up, investigate. And they, so they set their course and then they basically, I don't know how they do this, but like they basically put the ship on quarantine, but like, they're like, I don't know how they do it. Well, that, well that's a thing. I think they, they say that. It's like they activate the ship's hazard lights and oh, then yeah. make, make oh. it like repeatedly broadcast a, like a looping message yeah. of like, hey, because this is we, a quarantine we, vessel. Yeah, exactly. They just they just have remote control of it. So they just have it broadcast a signal that says, hey, don't come here. This, this is that'd a dangerous be ship. That'd be an interesting movie. Like if oh, they, you come, if, like you have you have like space pirates and they're like, we only go into qu- quarantine ships like that and steal their shit. 
Ah, and that's oh, like we should cut this out because I'm going to write that movie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so they go to, to the Tashi station to look at power converters, and um, now they go to this other Darwin station to see what's up with the laundry line. Landry. Laundry, <laughs> laundry, and and they they go to the the Darwin station and they um they they video call them and everyone looks old already. You're like, oh boy, it's oh, too, no. just too late, oh, too no. late. <laughs> and and it's uh they talk to Doctor Kingsley and she's like, hey, we have a crazy emergency here. Yeah, we need your help. And they basically explain this this weird. This weird thing, and and it turns out that this this girl, this lady, sorry, um, goes, "Are you Doctor Polanski?" And then she she like quotes a book that fucking Polanski wrote. Mm. Uh, so you know, like how many how many books has has Beverly Crusher written? Zero, because she, she sucks, just, dude. She's not a read. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't know how to practice. Okay, okay. I will bring up one piece of 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 canon here that. Uh, Beverly Crusher currently is supposedly the heat, the head of Starfleet Medical. Holy shit, dude! Yeah, yeah, that's why she left. She, but see, that feels like a token position. No, to me, no, though. it makes sense, dude. Yeah. People that yeah. suck always fail upwards. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that Good makes point. sense. Yeah. Good point. Well, it's just okay, but but it brings to mind the the, the thought: those who can't do teach. So it makes me be like, uh, eh, she she yeah, wasn't yeah. cutting it as a doctor. Yeah. So let's just. Yeah. Throw her off to teach people how to fake doctor. Yeah, it's it's not like the UC regents are going to teach anything anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and so and so they're like they're like so they're trying to investigate the stupid disease or whatever it is, a plague. Right, right. And they're like, uh, <laughs> could there be something that you guys were researching in that station that like? And they're like, no, our, our thing is strictly human. And it's like, well, yeah, where do you think it came from, dude? You don't <laughs> see fucking pigs like we're walking around here. It didn't jump from, it didn't get the swine flu. Like it's like clearly it came from your fucking state your your station to call the Darwin station. First thing I do, I blame them, dude. There's not enough people. There's gotta be a person on the sh- on, on the enterprise that's always blaming people. Like, no, fuck you. Tell us the truth, fucking Susan. And she's like, my name's not Susan, it's Dr. King. <laughs> fuck Susan you. Kingsley. Yeah, Susan Kingsley. No, it's not. So, so they basically say, "Hey, the people at the the other ship, they, they're all fucking dead, dude. You guys killed them." Uh, they don't say that, but I imagine that's what the captain. Well, they think. blame them. They blame the, the yeah, ship yeah, for bringing, yeah. it. and it's yeah. like, oh, fuck you. Yeah, and they're, they're like, no, they they can't. We we were healthy before they showed up, and we later find out that it it was a little bit of both, right? But I mean, mostly it was the, the Darwin for fucking with. Well, that's with what the, happens when you do genetic engineering. Yeah, and you yeah. aren't quite sure what's yeah. gonna happen. Yeah, uh, like when we get to it, some of the modifications they made to these pe- to these kids yeah. are yeah. kind of crazy. So they're so that that's when the kids come about. They're like, hey, they make it, they're making X Men, yeah, essentially, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, and it's and they're keeping them in an institution and teaching yeah. them. It's like, like it's it's just like that movie New Mutants. Yeah, what um, the fuck? But I haven't seen. <laughs> like, what are they? What are they gonna <laughs> do with them? It's well, like the weaponized. Like, I guess that's the implication or something, right? Like, cause, yeah. cause they created a bunch of telekinetic, telepathic, huge children with perfect they made a bunch systems. of mutant atomic supermen. Yeah. And then they just are just going to grow them. I guess it's, it's a weird idea that yeah. I'm surprised they're the, the Federation's letting them Wait, get hold, away hold, with. Hold on. Isn't this how Khan was created? Any like also, I, yeah. King I Kong think so. wasn't yeah. Khan a genetic experiment sort yeah, of Yeah, he, he was a genetic oh, yeah. superhuman experiment. Yeah. I don't know uh, if he so- was like fully test tube, but I think he was at least genetic experimentation. Mm-hmm. So, well anyway, maybe we have some cons here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, telepathic um, cons that's a bad idea. It's not bad. Yeah. Like the the cons from uh, from uh, King of Hill. <laughs> um and so pros, some phones. Yeah. only cons. <laughs> Um, so, um, so then they're like, Hey, so, uh, we have kids, dude, we should take them. And, and Polanski's like, fuck no, dude, we're in, we're in full quarantine bitches. Yeah. And she's like, no, these kids, they're healthy. They're so healthy. Like, don't, don't. <laughs> they're so healthy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> these, 
they're not affected by the, whatever this is. They don't have these this Benjamin Button disease. In <laughs> fact, they might even be too healthy. <laughs> uh, so then, so then they're like, "Hey, uh, take her children, please." Uh, and they're like, "No, we can't." But then, like, they start thinking, and it's like, "Well, like, Picard says something cool." And he's like, "Hey, this is really this is this is a really extreme situation. So we're going to consider like a, all the possibilities, and then we'll figure it out." He's and he's like, "You you should think about this too. Basically, like, think about the worst case scenario. Mm-hmm. Let's see what let's work from there." Right, right, right. <laughs> and so, like, they they have all the heads of all the departments. That's what I call in the yeah, conference yeah. room. And then they're like, like Worf is like. Absolutely not. Fuck these kids. Fuck they go to fucking hell for all I care. I don't fucking know them. Yeah, Worf always has the opinion that no one listens yeah. to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He makes the most sense and no one listens to him. He ended up being correct actually correct in this situation. We should yeah. never have yeah. brought them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, Polanski is like, well, let's bring one of them over as a test. And it's like, dude, what do you, what is, you think this, what do you think this is? Just one of them <laughs> over? Like if one of them has it, we were all dead. Like there's no way to <laughs> like isolate anything. Well, they do, they do, they do have these like really crazy, like quarantine procedures though. Like, which I think yeah. is like interesting. Like this is the first time the series has decided to actually care yeah. about really, really being careful about touching things and quarantining mm-hmm. and putting like force fields in like, like as they know. debate these points, you kind of have to just go with it and just take yeah. their word for it whenever they say like, well, th- this solution doesn't work because it has this like point of failure or this potential point of failure. Right, right, right. Like, right. you know, like th- we, we learn about force fields and other such yeah. containment methods through this conversation that we, yeah. it's, it, there, there's lore in here. Mm-hmm. So they, 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 they're, they're debating all these situations and uh, the, the doctor's like, hey, look, we should bring one in so I can examine at least. And if they have it, I will examine them and maybe we could figure out what it is or what's, what's causing this. But we should definitely uh, bring one over and we could just her suggestion. Very stupid. But she's like, (laughs) basically, it's the equivalent of this. We'll put them in a Ziploc bag. (laughs) Zip it up. Full size Ziploc bag for body. It's like like one of those. What were those things that vacuum seals? What are they called? What were they called? Like you're, th- you're thinking about the food saver. Yeah, the food. Sa- the food. <laughs> they put them in a food saver bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, then, and, and then they'll transfer them over, and it'll be it'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, and so what they end up doing is they put a force field around the they put a force field around the like the examination bed in the medical bay, mm-hmm. and then they saran wrap the kid. Yeah. And so. Um, what's the guy's name? Like the guy, the not, um, not Statham, but the guy who replaces him. Oh, Miles O'Brien. Miles O'Brien. Who is, is, incidentally, the true hero of this episode. Yeah. yeah. He kind of. And and I think he's been in a movie with Statham, but I have to double check. But I think they're British, right? Uh, he's Meany? Calm. He's he's Irish. Uh, look, dude, I just insulted a bunch of people, dude. Uh, <laughs> Send your hate mail to yeah. to uh, Statham. Statham. What is it? What is that website? Oh, newbiestatham.com. Newbiestatham.com. <laughs> That's the secret name of this podcast, yeah. by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. So uh, so then they're like, all right, Miles O'Brien, just fucking beam him over, and uh, we'll see what we can do. So they beam this thing over and uh f- and first of all I forgot to mention when they're in the conference room they're like all right captain's like okay uh you may bring him over for examination and they 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 zoom uh, they plan over to wharf and he's like oh he, he doesn't say anything but his look is like what the fucking shit <laughs> <We're> <laughs> fucking doing this <laughs> he's got he's got such a look of like what the fuck are we doing dude um, I mean he is in charge of security this is a yeah. giant headache for him like yeah, he has yeah. to, he has to deal with it. He's like, yeah. oh, God damn it. And then, so they beam over the kid and immediately Worf's like, transporter. It's a, a trap. It's, it's a, a disruption. disruption. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then the cat's like, calm down, dude, calm down. Let, let, he's in stasis, stasis. Yeah. And so he's in that, he's in that fucking saran wrap. And the, the doctor's like, Hey, be cool. The Ziploc bag is intact. Didn't mm-hmm. rip or anything. Mm-hmm. So they take the force field off, off the thing and they get closer and they're examining it. And, there, uh, it, fuck, hold on. Counselor Troy. Oof. <laughs> God damn it, dude. I almost got st- stuck in that one. Counselor Troy. 
Um, oh boy, I shouldn't drank this much. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> Counselor Troy uh, is like I could. She basically could send something. Like she's mm-hmm. it's like something dis- a distinct personality and stuff. So not only is the, are the kids full grown adults. That's the surprise of this fucking episode. Um, that they're they're it's like a man it's not a child it's a full-grown man yeah and it's and- kind of weird that they have no that there's no confusion or even discussion surrounding like did this virus age this kid to become this old this adult yeah. no one yeah, talks about that. I, thought, I thought that was gonna be part of it too i was like oh no yeah. th- he's just an adult now because the virus also worked on the yeah. child yeah. therefore also this was starting to bother me as we were talking about it earlier and i was just trying to remember this term uh toy collectors refer to this plastic sort of packaging as blister packs oh okay, <laughs> okay. Blister well, packs. They, they just call it styrolite in yeah. this world or something like that nah, yeah. it's just fancy talk for blister pack <laughs> yeah this is it's a fancy t- future term for for food saver packs <laughs> um <laughs> food saver is funnier though it was just it was just bothering me i went to know like what the heck is that called blister packs that's what they're called yeah 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 so um they the the doctor's like yeah this is this could be the the future of of, of humans i mean like the next basically she says this could be the next human evolution mm-hmm. uh and it's it, like the lines exactly from x-men yeah um, <laughs> she was just Ian McKellen <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. for a second yeah. 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 and so next thing you know they're 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 waving around like one of those uh electric what is it what is it called from doctor who Magic screwdrivers. Uh, the, the, the magic screwdriver. Sonic, Sonic, Sonic screwdriver. Sonic screwdriver. They're they're yeah. they're wanding them just like Beverly does. Every time yes. she doesn't know what's going on. Oh, yeah. Poke somebody or just wave she does this that. Wand. She does that just to like kill time or yeah. like or like, like or stall for time. Happens. She's like, yeah. I'm not sure what's going on. I'm just gonna pretend I'm scanning. I'm not She's sure. the person you and you know this person. You, everyone's worked with this type of person, who you know this person's not good at their job, <laughs> and and this is how they get away from things. They're like, oh, okay. Yeah, let's call her let's call her Heather. Um and you'll be like they'll be like, Heather, what do you think of this? What, what should we do here? And she's like, hmm, look, this is what I think we should do. This is above our pay grade. Let's call the person above us and figure out this thing. <laughs> and they never have solutions, but you're like, you're you should have solutions. Yeah. But yeah, they never yeah, do. Yeah, they they, yeah. they always call somebody else. And that's what Beverly feels like always. Like yeah. she's like, uh, we should just we should concur with somebody else. Um and uh they never know the answers. And pull but Polanski always, you all, what I like about her is that you always see her thinking where Beverly was like, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. This, yeah. this doctor's like, like, well, okay, well you could see her like kind of like narrowing down and like, she's really putting in some like detective work on this stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like before she always has this sense of like competence. Beverly's, yeah. Yeah. Beverly's always exasperated and Pulaski's always like determined. Yeah. 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 yeah that's the difference. That's <laughs> it, it feels like Polanski's always like on offense. See what I mean, like yeah, she's, yeah, and and Beverly's always on defense. Like oh, and she's gosh. always reacting yeah. versus Pulaski is like I see a situation, I'm going to try to deal with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so the doctor's like, hey, let's get them, let's get them out of this saran wrap. Or what is it called, Dan? Styrolite. Cellulite. Styrolite. Blister pack. It's a yeah. styrolite blister pack. Yes. Let's she's like let's get it. Let's let's bust this baby open. I know the, the, the value of it will go down, but let's rip it up uh, mm-hmm. and get this, this kid out of there and see what's going on. Um, mm-hmm. And the kid's like asleep. He's like, um, like frozen in time. He's in I wonder, stasis. Can you, can you just freeze people like this? Like for years? Yeah. They, they've had, um, they do have stasis pods, I think. Oh, okay. Um, for, for like travel. Futurama. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, like, can, can you just say the, can you we just saw say at the uh, end of the the, the first season? We saw frozen people. Oh yeah, and that was like right, old right. shitty yeah. technology. Yeah. So they have better versions of that now. Yeah. In this but world. Could, could, I wonder in the, in this world, can you say, oh, um, it's getting boring boring here. Like, I'm just gonna. <laughs> can you just freeze me for like fifty years and then and then you live every fifty years? You get unfrozen for like five, and then like yeah, yeah. yeah. You know that's a fascinating idea for a sci-fi concept in general so someone who wants to keep traveling forward in time yeah i think yeah. that was a headache that the writers of that like episode we're referencing right now did not want to touch at all because <laughs> during that episode they're like it was a short-lived fad from the late 20th century. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. we, century. Don't, we definitely we don't, don't do, do that, that shit oh, that's anymore stupid now why yeah. would anyone <laughs> want to preserve their life for who several would, years who would want to do that now it's stupid <laughs> So then, um, you have uh, God. Now you got me thinking about that that movie idea. 
Um, <laughs> so then uh, I'm not going to be able to concentrate for the rest of the goddamn fucking episode. Uh, so then Picard's like, no fucking way, dude. You're not un- un- unlocking, un- taking this thing out of the wrapper. You know how much value this has like this? <laughs> And, he's in um, mint condition. Yeah, he's in no yeah. scratches. Look at him. Yeah. Um, it's and so the mint smooth. condition X Men figure. <laughs> <laughs> I should and, know. I'm Professor X. Oh no! Uh, Why all um, no? And he's no. actually Professor X. <laughs> yeah, it's true. And so, and when I look up, also this is, feels like we're we're really hyping up this doctor. What I also like about this doctor is that she challenges Picard. Yeah, yeah. I, I pulled that as a clip because um intellectually, uh, not sexually. <laughs> Maybe sexually. We don't know. No, uh, Beverly had that. Well, I don't think Beverly challenged Picard sexually. He was just not interested. I guess so. <laughs> well, he already fucked her and they had they had uh, Wesley, so uh but well, yeah, they, it's a it's an interesting they had some pers- hot scenes together. Uh, yeah, remember remember when they were dying and she wanted to hold his hand while they fucking died? And no, no kid, and he just and he was, walked away. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. They were dying on on mm-hmm. the 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 syndrome planet, or she was dying. Yeah, and she was like, "Oh, I'm dying." And Picard's like, "Stay awake, stay awake." And he's just walking away. No, but remember when the, the other plague episode? Where well, that's was no dying? time to have sex, Marvin. Yeah. Oh, that's oh yeah, that's true. And, uh, th- yet another plague that happened on their ship no. on her watch. Yeah, and then she was like, "I'll rather spend time with you, Picard, instead of my th- son th- Wesley." Th- also, I'd rather spend time with you than figuring out how to fucking save us. <laughs> Goddamn, Beverly. Uh, um, so anyway. Apologies um, to that one commenter who, is, who hates us dumping on Beverly all the time. <laughs> you know what? This, this is not going to stop. Yeah. <laughs> this train, I mean, she needs wait. to prove herself. Yeah, yeah the, show needs to, the show needs to save just her. Like, just like how Miles proved himself this episode. Yeah, yeah, like, like he, yeah, I he can't went, believe that he overcame his alcoholism and <laughs> actually his, saved his the day this time. Addiction. <laughs> yes. You know what? You know what's so crazy, dude? Is that um, it turns out Miles O'Brien is probably the smartest person on the goddamn ship. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. he like it, it's interesting because he just like, casually he just casually uh, offers up like something that's never been done before, but it's oh, theoretically wait. possible. Okay, okay. Let, let's not spoil this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we want to get to it fast. Well, I, yeah, yeah. I, I want to go through this. Look. Uh, Because I wanted to get into that. So basically, he's like, we have to do this. We have to do it for science, dude. We have to do it for science. And so she's (laughs) like, this is what we do. We basically, they come up with an idea that they go on a, a, what is it, transporter? What is it? A A shuttle. A shuttle, shuttle, sorry. Because she talks to Jordy and Jordy's like, there's no, there's no way that's like, that's a hundred percent safe. There's no way. There's always a chance that a force field could come down. Yeah, if you do it on the ship, there's no perfectly sealed thing on the ship. Yeah, yeah. There's no, there's no way to do it. So she's like, oh, interesting. Not on the ship, you say. So basically, she's like, all right, well, um, I'm going to take a shuttle, drive it out for a bit, Mm -hmm. and then we'll do it there. No one's, no one's gonna, no one's gonna care, you know. And I'll put myself at risk and stuff. So she goes to the captain and goes, hey, uh, the study's not without risk, but I want to go. What, what clip do you have? You have one of these. Oh yeah, it's the one where she's like, um, he he's like, I don't want to let you do this. She's like, I'm gonna do this. So so here's the clip. Do it. I I want to free him from the Styrolite. That seems rather risky, Doctor. I can do no further tests until he's animate. But what if you're wrong? So what happened on the Lantry? I know I'm right. I can't expose the Enterprise until I know where this disease came from and how it is transmitted. I realize that, Captain. Naturally, we'll establish a force field containment. But if we lose the force field for any reason, we lose the ship. Force fields can fail. And until- we don't have that kind of time. Now, these children can't survive in the lab once their parents are dead. Look at him, Captain. He's a human being who needs our help. But the risk is- Minimal. If you can demonstrate that he is biologically harmless without risk to the crew, I'll do everything in my power to assist. And doctor, God knows I'm not one to discourage him, but but I would appreciate it if you'd let me finish my sentences once in a while. <laughs> so I, I like that. No yeah. one else yeah. is willing to talk to Picard that way. Yeah. Which is mm-hmm. interesting because she's, 
she's doing it not even in the service of her like her career or anything like like almost everyone else in the ship yeah. does he, she's doing it in the service of i i want to science like, yeah science and like this well, is a she's way like for appealing to like humanity she wants to save the kid yeah which is interesting because both because they had that conversation. She has that conversation with Dana Troy where she's like, I feel like Picard isn't, doesn't have, he's not very human, you know, which is funny because that's the same like kind of criticism Picard had of Pulaski that she's not very like easy to deal with. And they, and they joke that they just, when they talk, all they do is yell regulations at each other, which is like a great way of, of framing their relationship at the start of this episode. And then you see how it progresses from there. It's a good, fr- this is a really good character episode because like once they go on that shuttle too, right? Like she has to bring data because data is the only one who can pilot the ship while right. I, I do like how danger. that naturally like slots in, like yeah. it yeah. allows her this, some time with data. Yeah. It's yeah. super well written yeah. in terms of like, well, let's just have these char- like, like they, she was clearly the central point of this episode. And they were like, who are the most interesting people to interact with her in that capacity? Yeah. And it's Picard and data. So yeah, they kind of rotated around that, and she's like, and, and she basically calls Data and is like, "Hey," um, and she and Data's like, "Would you call for me?" He's like, "Yeah, go, go fly the ship." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so they fly out, they fly the shuttle out, and um, a few thousand or whatever meters, or whatever it is, I don't know what what do they use in the future? Do they use the metric system, or what are they using? I think metric system. They, yeah. they, you think we finally the U.S. is like, oh, everybody else is doing it. Oh, they're not even the United States. They're, Everything they're is measured in parsecs. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, that's true. They did measure in parsecs a little bit in this episode. So. Um. So then, so then they're like, all right. So, so data flies out for a bit, and um, it, uh, he flies out, and then there's this, the funny banter where like data's like, oh, you're gonna open him up, huh? Um. <laughs> uh, and uh, and he, she basically is like, hey, I have, I don't have, I I want to remind you that you're a machine. You're you're gonna be fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah, like you're not gonna catch anything that he has. Um, and Data says something really interesting, which which which, which he he says like, well, that's not really one hundred percent certain, right? Because he did get drunk. Yeah, in the naked yeah. now. So like yeah. some biological things can actually affect yeah. him. Randomly. And you know when he him and <laughs> Tasha, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, when there was the, the horned up disease, another disease going around town. Okay. Kind of a gross point. Does he come? Um, yeah. Microchips. He- microchips. <laughs> fully functional. Fully functional microchips. That's true. He said fully functional. He must yeah. come. Like yeah. he must have. Yeah. That's, That's like not even a question. Robocop. So, yes. <laughs> something comes out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and then. Um, Thermal paste. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so you had icy diamond coming. Out. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then, um, so then, uh, Miles uh, O'Brien transports. I don't know why they didn't just. I guess because it's safer just beam him up over there instead of like putting him in the ship. I guess it's safer than like wheeling him all the way to the to the the bay, the shuttle bay. Yeah, moving yeah. him into the ship. It's just just transport. Yeah. What if they bump a wall and they're like, oh fuck, we tore it. O- oh shit. Oh fuck, yeah. we're all dead. Oh shit. <laughs> Burn this whole hallway. <laughs> so they beam him up to the shell ship, and 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 the doctor takes out the um, takes out the oh, and they say, uh, so what was earlier on? She she asked the the lady, what were the first signs that you knew that you guys had this disease? And basically, they were like oh, arthritis. Everything started hurting. All her bones <laughs> yeah. started hurting. Yeah. <laughs> so then, so then she takes off the saran wrap, and and she the the this person this human's not talking, but she's like, I do. She starts talking to it, and mm-hmm. so you realize like, oh yeah, like um, Counselor Troy. Yeah, dude. <laughs> uh, she she was right with what she was feeling, which was that they're telekinetic. They mm-hmm. have all these powers. They telepathic, they telepathic. Telekinetic and telepathic, all the yes, T's, dude. Well, yeah. Dave, uh, wait, did David d- demonstrate telekin? Like, I think they are all telekinetic and telepathic. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. think I think all the children yeah. are essentially the same, and they yeah, all yeah. just do that. Uh, that's not like that's not enough. Like the X Men, you want variety? <laughs> no, no, they're all just Jean Grey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fine. Um. So then, so then they're they're examining the the kid, 
and the doctor immediately, uh, well, first data scans her, uh, and and and, she, and then she's like, "See, nothing, nothing wrong here. Nothing, nothing bad to see here. Look at, see." And all then she's, systems good. All systems go, and she's scanning him, and she's like, "Oh God, my goddamn fucking arm!" <laughs> and it's like, "Whoa, that fast?" That's but, not it's fast. like she got shot. fucking arthritis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. like it's not it's arthritis. Like, cause it's like someone you know? took a lead pipe and just hit her in the fucking <laughs> <Yeah>. elbow. <laughs> Bam! That's how she reacted. Did. Or she had, oh, or she had a heart attack. Yeah, and she was like, yeah. "Oh, I'm having a heart attack." That's now. what I thought. Like, because she was holding her arm, I was like, "Oh, that's a sign of a heart attack." I, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> that's that's yeah. And it's then, a little, so a little da- much. Data helps helps her like sit down, and she she hails the captain. She's like, "There's no, there's like no warning. Like literally, just like boom. I I had the arthritic inflammation immediately." Yeah. And she's like, and then she, her voice starts changing. She's like, oh, I feel like, I don't think that she's worried. I think like, she's like loud whispering. Mm. Uh, yeah. Um, and then so, <laughs> so um, Miles O'Brien gets called up again. Cause they're like, let's send this fucker back. Let's send this guy back to his, his ship. Yes, right? yes, yes. So he, he gets the coordinates of, of the isolation chamber and then sends that kid back. He's like, fuck yeah. this kid. Uh, which is, uh, this technology is pretty amazing. Now we get to the talk about this technology. Right. So, because basically they, they, they're like, there's nothing we can do. Everyone's dying. They all died in the ship and they all gather again in the conference room. And they're like, you know, like there's nothing to change it. There's no, there's nothing. Yeah. And then, and then someone just suggested like, well, bring them into the, to, to the teleporter and just filter out like disease. And yeah, they're like, what, well, there's yeah, no yeah. way to do that. There's no yeah, way to yeah. do that. And then, and then Miles O'Brien suggests something that's quite genius. And it's like, it also lends insight into the technology that tra- that lets you like transport people, which is mm-hmm. that like you're basically killing them and yes. tearing them apart. It and this them this back basically together. confirms that the transporter is not a transference of particles from one spot to another. Mm-hmm. What Didn't it's we doing, already establish this before? I think well, so. This already because, came up. In yeah, yeah. Episode. This came up. Yeah. This came. Up, yeah, the, actually, this came up before. You're right. In um when um they were when talking, they had to bring back a safe state for um, for Picard. Because yeah. Picard yes. was out in space somewhere, he got scattered, right, and right. then they they used uh, like a previous safe state to bring him back. Yeah, the system restored him. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And and which brings me to my next point, which is why didn't they do that to Tasha? Well, that just brings up the entire issue of isn't the t- transporter just a cloning machine? Yeah, and why can't you just clone people? With the just, same memories yeah. and bring and them back from the last, was state. last recorded in their, their last state. save, yeah. basically, that's right? Actually, what it is, yeah. Like there's there's no ifs, ends, or buts about it because, like, yeah. they literally. Okay, I, I have I have a solution to this, Marvin, and something you told me long ago. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. Well, well, well. Here's the question. So, like, say, like, okay. So, say, um, you and me are on the Enterprise, right? All right. three of us are in the Enterprise, right? And we're like, dude, let's go down to that fuck planet and see what's up. And mm-hmm. then so we all get beamed down there, right? And then we're we're in that fuck planet. And then someone doesn't like how I'm looking at their lady, stabs me. Boom, I die, dude. I bleed out. Mm-hmm. I, look, I know we have technology to fix people, but say that the, this fuck planet does it. Right. And I die. And can't you just go, hey, bring them back from the last time before we left the ship, right? And then if they bring me back from my last save, do I remember? Being stabbed in the fuck planet? You shouldn't. That, no, you right? Because sh- it's a last save, right? It's no, weird because you kind... If we move forward a bit for this... Well, it's interesting because when they brought Picard back, he didn't remember. Yeah, yes, he did But in this episode, they use that... Uh, just, you know, moving slightly ahead, they bring Pulaski back using that method. And she does remember. Yeah. So I'm not quite sure what's going on. Yeah. Uh, it, it's not... Sometimes it seems to be a safe state thing, like with Picard. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it seems like it's like a like using like a game shark instead, and you're kind of yeah. like modifying yeah. the save file. I'm yeah. not quite sure what's going on. <laughs> it's and I, I because it's future bullshit technology. Like you could probably mix and match it yeah. based on what you kind of need it to like it serves the purposes of this episode quite well the way it works right and i think i kind of prefer the way it works here versus like the way it worked for picard back then because that implies that they are save states whereas here it, it's more implied that no it's a saving of genetic material 
So you can like modify it's, people. It's a filter to compare against, or like it, it's it, it's data con- to compare against. Yes. So that makes lends more credence to this idea that this is strictly for transportation. We are not doing cloning per se. So that that makes that work a lot better. It also is a good opportunity to finally give Miles O'Brien like a bigger thing to do. Mm-hmm. Like, cause he, cause he's at this well, meeting. Finally, as though there's some huge master plan for him, but I mean, eventually I think it there. was just incidentally, like he, he became larger and larger naturally, but not just necessarily because like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it, but it was not nice. a premeditated rise of Miles O'Brien. No, no, but it's, it was nice that they were like, oh, let's finally give, give him a, a bigger role. Like let's have him at the meeting, you know, with all like the senior officers. He's not a senior. He's just a transporter chief. Yeah. But he, he ends up uh, being at this meeting. For, yeah, but wait a minute. He, is he named yet? Is he named in this episode? Yeah. This is the first episode where he's fully named Miles O'Brien. There's actually a story where um, I always get his name wrong. His original name in the show, they were going to name him Miles Teller. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, no, in the future, there's going to be a kid who's going to get punched in the face in Hawaii. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> We yeah, just just be a complete asshole in every yeah. movie he works on. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, he um, what's his what's uh, Colmini? Is that how you say his name? I believe yeah. so. Yeah, coal miner. So, coal miner. <laughs> yeah, he said he received a script, and he said suddenly the character had a name. So mm. like they Good. they eventually Good liked for him, him more and more and more ever since the first season like cuz cuz he showed up randomly every once in a while in the first season completely unnamed mm-hmm. and I guess he was just a pleasure to hang out with and they're just like all right we'll, we'll make you a character yeah. he ends yeah. up being like the most important character in this episode yeah so, so a couple things happen uh, so basically we, we we debated this whole technology and that was the, that's the biggest part of this episode so anyway, so, so since the doctor has a disease, she's, they decide, fuck it, let's go to this fucking station and see what's up. So they go to the station, and the the doctor there, sh- who's now getting really old, yeah. shows her these kids who have like these superpowers, basically. And they go to this like observation room, and they're like moving chess pieces with their like mind, and just X-Men shit, you know? Yeah, yeah. Superpower shit. Uh, so dudes were running really fast. That'd be cool for them. <laughs> <laughs> Quick silver. Like, they, they just ha- they just all have X Men powers, and yeah, like one's yeah. one's uncontrollably shooting lasers from his eyes. Yeah, uh, one girl's like, sitting in the corner keep, trying yeah. not to touch anyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah. so then, but it, what's so cool too is that like, doc, the doctor knows she's dying, right? Mm. Yet she still p- perseveres and finds what happened and how did this happen. Mm. So basically they break down the fact that like the dudes, the space truckers uh, were delivering items to them. Mm-hmm. Right. The, the, the people that died in the first ship we saw in the, movie, in the right. show. Uh, the, so the space truckers came to deliver stuff. One of them had the flu, which we discovered early on the episode. Mm-hmm. And because of how these mutant kids are made, they, they're, they don't get sick. They really don't get sick. None of this fake shit that we talk about in the show, no one gets sick, but everyone gets sick. <laughs> but these kids don't get sick, but the way yeah. their bodies work, <clears throat> they, so in reaction to this flu, their body made this weird thing, this weird virus kind of to counteract the flu. Like that, they emit antibodies into yeah. this, into the air to fight the virus before it yeah. gets to them. Which is yeah. crazy. Yeah. Like it's fucking that's, nuts. Yeah. <laughs> Which these scientists it, were crazy. Yeah. yeah. Why would we have anyone be shooting anything? Like it's, they're basically spraying it in the air. Yeah. Yeah. Why would we ever want that? No, but sure. Yeah, we don't. <laughs> Um, but she finds it out, which is really cool because, like, even, even she could have just done like Beverly and just sat down and tried to hold somebody. Yeah, Beverly would have just eyes. laid down, trying yeah. to hold somebody's yeah. hand. <laughs> do, do, you, do you want to talk to your child before you die? No, just, no, just I want somebody to hold, hold my hand. I'll, I'll hold Data's hand. Yeah, and die. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so, so Data, um, they they're gonna be <laughs> they they they're like, okay, Data's got all this info, and he's got to help the people on the Enterprise figure out what's going on. Mm-hmm. And the doctor's saying goodbye. To data, basically, for all she knows, this is the last time he's gonna, she's going to see anybody from her old, you know, from her ship, basically. Right. And she even says, like, they have a sweet moment where she's like, she's like, as androids go, you're 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 in a class by yourself. Like, yeah, she basically I love that. like, yeah, I, this is yeah, the start of her sweet. 
like because because they no had spoilers. a moment right before this they probably hook up right no no but they, they have a moment uh, yeah, right before dude. <laughs> <laughs> well they have a moment right before that where uh while they were still on the shuttle where plasky was like oh well i this this is terrible and then data says oh i i don't i want to make sure you're make sure things are okay and she said don't worry you're gonna be fine and he said like i wasn't talking about me i was talking about you yeah i want to make sure you're okay and she's like oh you're like a nice person (laughs) yeah yeah. Yeah. and it it feels like uh this is like the start of her arc towards like understanding who data is you know yeah Yeah. so they beam up they beam back data And uh, they scan him, and they have they should have had guns, and they're like, if he if this guy shows up, we just fucking shoot him. Uh, but he gets beamed up, and they 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 run a scan before they let him in, and they're like, oh, he's he's clear, man. And so the captain shows up, and basically they come up with the idea of like, hey, because f- first of all, they're like, well, we need to go to the last save, and but we need like her medical records, and the thing that they kept saying and they kept pushing was the fact that she doesn't use the the transporter at all Mm -hmm. so there's no record of her leaving the ship and coming in yeah so they can't they can't grab it from the last save which makes this even more complicated and very interesting because they can't just go like maybe that's why she knew what was happening i don't know how the fuck she they did it but anyway so like it's it's not like they could just go to their last save because there was no save for her and they even went to her last ship and like they they like researched it and they basically uh, some, someone said oh her, her captain said that her old her, captain said that she always took shuttles and never used transporters well, well they actually cleared all her logs as that soon too. as she left and that then too. they were like well she didn't she barely used the transporter anyway yeah, so yeah, yeah they cleared all her so you think with the computers that big and you know i could store a ton of things on my <laughs> usb flash drive they can't store one little fucking file no, um, but anyway no. so they're looking around for anything they could find that has her dna and they finally find it in a in a br- hairbrush right uh they find a, a a strand of hair and they take it to miles o'brien and like hey can you do something with this and he looks at it he does all this you know typing and stuff and so basically, like yet I, so, another sh- major technical hurdle that Miles O'Brien solves immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, it's I, this major thing that requires like a complete reconfiguration of the transporter again because he just did it once. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, it's and funny because like, like oh, Picard's sure, like, "How's how's this going to work?" And Miles is like, "Well, you have to do this, 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 and this." And Picard's like, "Do it." And Miles like, "All right, you heard him, boys. Let's do it." And they're all just like going to the panels and doing all this shit. And you're like, yeah. "Man." These yeah, guys are makes good. You, it, yeah, it really <laughs> makes you feel like Miles O'Brien knows what he's doing, which is yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. He's he's fucking competent. He knows what he's doing. He's not he's not drunk right now. When he is sober, so he, he knows what's going on. Yeah, it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, this is a cool thing with the Captain Miles O'Brien, which basically Miles O'Brien's like, I'm ready to do this, dude. Let's fucking do it. And he basically says a uh, one last thing. Uh, basically, like, there's no. We can't beam her back when she's here. Once this happens, we can't send her back. We they basically have to shoot her out into space. Yeah, they have <laughs> one. We got one shot at this. Yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah. And so basically, yeah. the captain's like, "Well, I guess I should do it because if someone's gonna kill her, it should be me, not you." Basically, I actually yeah. really like that part because Miles is just yeah. like immediately like, "Well, thank you, sir." Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's, he's like, he's like, <laughs> I'm moving that to you, cool. man. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's on, I'll, that's on I'll you, man. monitor that's the bio you. signs <laughs> here. But yeah, yeah, yeah. You pull the trigger. Yeah, he's like, "Look, it was my theory." But I don't want to be responsible for killing yeah, somebody. Yeah. I'm just going to stand over there. <laughs> it's a really the, uh, interesting concern. Yeah. You know? Well, yeah, and he's, like, also, he's like, I don't you know, need that in my record. Because it probably goes in your record like, oh, Miles O'Brien was on the controller yeah. when this person died. <laughs> and he's like, if I'm not on here, it's the captain. Yeah, it's a really home. interesting Smart. concern that he brings it up. And Picard, Picard's instant well, solution he, for it is, I'll do it. Yeah. You know? Well, he he offers it preemptively. He doesn't. It's not even a concern that Miles himself brings up. Yeah, Picard right, right, offers right. and he accepts it readily. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's very interesting. So they bring her. They bring her back and they like do this te- technology bullshit, and she's back. They Benjamin button her back to health. And yeah. Uh, well, as youth was she was before she left. Right. Right. Um. Yeah. They don't bring her back. Like, and they're like, oh no, we went too far. Now she's nineteen. And um. So anyway, they bring her back and, and she she like thanks everybody and 
you know, she's like, well, I well, love P- you all. Well, Picard and Pulaski hug. Yeah. They, they finish yeah. off their, their little arc here where they don't want own hugs. I think we and... skipped over a part where when Picard is talking to Pulaski's previous captain, like asking like, hey, do you still like have her medical like um like file that will tell us how to reconstruct her? Mm-hmm. Like he, Picard takes a moment to ask her like, why'd you let her go? Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. And the captain's like, well, she immediately requested to go to your ship. Yeah, like as soon as a uh, position was available, is this because she she's a huge fan of you Pic- of yours, Picard's, Picard, dude. Later, we we're gonna find out that when they were young, they fucked, dude, <laughs> and she never forgot. Well, and she's the implication is Picard's like the rock star of the Federation because like they, Riker wanted to work with him because yeah. they're. Uh, he Beverly did, too. but for personal reasons. That too. And then you know, Pulaski wanted to work there. Jordy actually wanted to work there because of... Uh, Wesley. P- <laughs> well, <laughs> well, because of Picard as well. And that's actually not in the show directly, I think. But I think it's like a supplemental thing that he I wanted to I think we went over with. that briefly. Once. Yeah, yeah. So it's just um, like everyone just loves Picard. He's speaking of Jordy, guy. I just want to give him a really quick shout out for being the one to suggest the shuttle idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Jordy, Pulaski Jordy, had to talk to him, but yeah. what's funny is that like Pulaski was just like asking him random questions. Jordy was like, "Well, here's my theoretical answer," and then Pulaski's like, "Yes, a shuttle." Thanks, Jordy. And Jordy's like, "Okay, yeah. <laughs> I'll get back to work now." Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. So, so <laughs> the captain and the doctor hug, and then they do one last thing, which is they go back to the ship with the, the trucker ship, and they're like, "Well." Basically, they they so, so I skipped over something. So basically, they brought all the old medical crew from that from the Darwin station. They did the whole same thing. Where yeah, like, yeah, they had their scans. They just went to their old saves and brought them in, made them young again. Mm-hmm. So they pulled everybody out, but they left all the kids there because you know they're a goddamn hazard, dude. Yeah, these kids they're are dangerous as shit. Yeah, so they're they're quarantined to that ship. They can't leave. Right. Uh, they're, they're cursed. What's funny is that that leaves them all in the exact situation that Pulaski said would kill them. Yeah. yeah. They don't I'll have their caregivers no, around anymore. They'll just, they'll just throw food down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like the, it's like the hole in the dark night rises. They'll just throw supplies down. Yeah. They're fine. Eventually and, and they'll climb out. And razors. <laughs> Wait, <it's a> <laughs> was there a part in the Dark Knight Rise where they just threw supplies down for, to the people below? No, there isn't because, so what happened was that they're underneath uh, remember the cops get get trapped in the tunnels? Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. It, it's months that go by. Oh yeah, yeah. But you, there are scenes in that <laughs> in that in the tunnels where you do see them like like sliding them supplies. I guess so. But yeah. and and razors too. <laughs> no one had hey, a man, beer. Cops, cops got to shave. <laughs> no one had a beer when they came. No one. Came, they didn't come out. And also, like their their clothes were like 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 they, they had, had their fucking, guns. Yeah, they so had they, their guns. They sh- as as their beards are growing, they're shooting them off. <laughs> they're shooting they're That's why no one shot any clothes. guns in the final fight. Yeah. Everyone was just running at each other to it punch. Because why yeah. would you, why would you do that instead of shooting each other? Yeah, because I mean, some they people shot their had beards gun- off. Some people had guns still, but they were big fans of the X Men intro. And they're like, I want to, I want to do that. Yeah, <laughs> well, let's go fist first into the crowd. Um, so anyway, so they 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 save everybody from the Darwin station. The, the kids are cursed; they're going to fucking die probably. Yeah, and they're like, well, we can't leave this sh- this trucker ship just out there. Someone's going to fucking catch this disease. So they go and they have to blow it up, and it's a very emotional scene because they have to blow up a Federation ship. And yeah, and everyone stands, and there's like this voiceover with the doctor giving yeah. a log, yeah. and it's like kind of like being like should we have done this to begin with sort of thing? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. But I'm glad they blew it up. Cause I was like, it's dangerous. Me space pirates come and they open up the ship and yeah, it's, there's it, no there's, reason to keep a, it a around at this point. It's like an yeah. event horizon type movie. You know, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway, that that's the end of the episode. It was a fun episode. There's a lot of interesting things with the whole cloning transporter thing, but sadly we didn't see, um, didn't see them manning the transport station. No, he's busy this season. He's probably on transport. Transporter 12, because this one is probably like the low teens, you know? <laughs> the low teens. Yeah. I do find it notable that in the chief medical officer's log, uh, Pulaski signs off saying this scientist's log. She calls it, she refers to herself as a scientist. Well, I think because she, she is. I think she's probably. Oh, yeah, we've already like, th- we've already like seen all the evidence that points to this perception of herself i i just think it's neat that they confirmed it and how yeah, she yeah. refers to herself i think i think another distinction between her and beverly is that beverly seems to be more of like a physician that keeps up on new sciences whereas pulaski seems to constantly be 
like, oh, I'm researching shit myself. I'm just, yeah, I, wrote, a I wrote books, yeah. you know, you know, so yeah, it's a, it's a great episode. I, yeah. I, I, I think this is currently the best episode so far, in my opinion. I, like that we've seen so far, like in across both seasons. Yes. Up to now. Yeah. I honestly, this is like, to me, the perfect Star Trek story where yeah, I you, can get behind that. it's very character driven. And there's arcs to it. Like, you know, obviously you have the triangle, Pulaski, Data, Pulaski, and Picard. And Pulaski and Picard, they grow a mutual respect for each other. And Pulaski grows an understanding of who Data is as a person, other than the android she'd always seen. So it, it, it's interesting there. There's a lot of interesting science concepts that are brought up, like sci-fi science concepts. So like the transporter thing, obviously, but also like this idea of genetic engineering that like, mm. that's kind of one of the weaker points is that they kind of go, ah, this is genetic engineering, don't worry about it. And they, they don't like really develop it. I mean, it's, it's only an hour long. They can't develop it that much. And it's like a tangential thing. So that's fine. And, you know, this is a really well-written episode. And that, that last log that uh, Pulaski says is really good. Like, it's a really good summation of what they feel about what happened and honestly the main the weakness of the episode is that the makeup is terrible yeah. so like when, whenever the they're supposed to get older it just kind of looks awful uh especially on Pulaski unfortunately um and and then the the Kingsley lady like because for Kingsley the main her- Kingsley yeah like to make her older all they did was like just make her grayer yeah yeah <laughs> And everyone else in the station, they just hired actually old actors just yeah. so they don't have, they can get around the shit. They don't have to but do But then it. they pasted some granola onto them. Yeah. 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 It was, well, they have to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they had a, they had a sponsorship with Kellogg's. Uh, <laughs> oh, you know what? It, while other, while we were talking, I happened to just quickly check and Miles O'Brien is not named in the actual credits of this episode. Ooh. Yeah, but he shows up in the, he's, he, he the, is, he's a guest star. Yeah, it's the first he time he gets a star credit, but yeah. he's not named on as a credit yet. Yeah, it's the first time he shows up in the opening credits, and I mean, so, so does uh, Diana Moldar. She's always shows up as a guest actor in the um, credits as well. They they rarely name them in the opening right. credits mm. in general, but in the script, he was actually fully named Miles O'Brien. So they were like, okay. Also, like she apparently. She, her performance, I'm like, I mean, I think her performance is pretty good. Um, like, like she, you know, there's that scene where she's on the view screen with Picard and Riker and she's like, oh, I'm about to die. So this is my final medical log, you know, yeah. and she could undercut by her Yoda face. Yeah. It's, it's a little, yeah. but apparently she couldn't remember her lines. <laughs> she was drunk. So, so they, they did the, they did the Robert De Niro thing and they gave her cue cards. And she was actually reading off of cue cards for a lot of this episode. Okay. I, I mean, yeah, that so, goes well with her Yoda face, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I've always said this, and I'll say it again. I don't care who gets mad at me. I think Marlon Brando is a bad actor. Because <laughs> if you have to have cue cards, no, I don't care how good you are. You're not that good of an actor if you can't fucking remember your lines. I mean, that is the most basic thing for an yeah, actor. Yeah, also, to do. second of all, second of all, the like, greatest fucking American actor of all time. Second of all, when he wasn't with like a top notch director, he wasn't good. That's true. Yeah. It's, I think a lot of, uh, a lot of great acting performances are actually the result of their directors and editors. Well, like well also like harnessing that, shaping it, shaping their, oh, like, yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. You That's have, what I you mean. have this, yeah. look, I, I won't deny it, Marlon Brown has amazing raw talent. But if you didn't have like a France for Coppola or a either Kazan guiding that talent, like that energy, mm-hmm. then it, it like he worked with a lot of directors that didn't know how to direct them and it just yeah. fucking was chaotic. So I honestly feel the same way about like Joaquin Phoenix, um, which is why like I'm going to be this is a really unpopular opinion, but I think his performance in Joker is pretty bad. Oh, my like, God. Honestly, dude. like because now we're going to get hate mail. Dude. <laughs> well, because I just think Todd Phillips has, didn't know how to direct him. And all he did was just say, go, go do thing. And they didn't really edit his performance at all. So mm-hmm. you can actually see in his eyes moments where he's like, I'm going to switch modes now. And this is going from scared Joker to dance Joker. Like it's not a very smooth performance versus like when you see him in like walk the line or you see him in like, you were never really here. Mm-hmm. Like you could tell the performances are way more like precise and also edited well, especially in Walk the Line. 
Like, yeah. cause in, cause in walk the line, like you can tell there's parts where he was probably going a little crazy, but you can tell where they edited it to make sense. Yeah. Versus like in Joker, it almost just seemed like he was unhinged and like, you know, that Joker can help. unhinged. Yeah. I mean, that could help with the idea <laughs> of Joker, but to yeah. me, it made it uneven. Like the only, the only performance I really believed him of when he did a switch was that scene early on when he's like kind of laughing as he's leaving his his clown temp agency or whatever the fuck yeah. that is <laughs> and his face turns off i thought yeah. that was great but yeah yeah but anyway this is star trek and yeah. that was a natural selection and i i really enjoyed it top notch i'm gonna give it a nine i'd also give it a nine i i think this is currently the best episode of the series um, if we're going this way, because there's no real, it's not, there's not, there's no real flaw in it in terms of like the, the execution and the, the writing to me. Um, but what do you think Dan? what would you give it? Yeah, aside from like the nitpicky plot, holy tech stuff. Well, some of which does kind of bug me this time. 8.5 for me. Well, right. you mean, you, you mean because of the, the DNA stuff and the, yeah, the, they I never think, played, they never played the DNA song from, from Kendrick <laughs> Lamar, you know, That's fucked up. <laughs> I do. Yeah, think- man. I do, opportunity to play them song. I, I, I do think they get around it a bit more by having a different explanation of how the transporter works versus like a previous episode. But yeah. they, t- they talked about the transporter so much, but they never fucking brought in Jason Statham. So no. uh, whatever. <laughs> nine. That's why they get a nine, not a 10. Fuck them. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. So that was a natural selection. And next time. Uh, we're not going to have an episode next week. We're going to skip a week, but next time it's going to be a matter of honor, uh, which, you know, as soon as you have honor in the title is a Klingon episode. There's, it's no getting around that. So anyway, uh, if you've enjoyed newbie star Trek, thank you for listening. If you'd like to help us out, uh, give us a review Apple podcasts. That'd yeah. be really helpful. Join our only fans. <laughs> uh, Dan hasn't started that yet, but soon he will. Yeah. Dan thinks it's our only fans. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then right now I'm only accepting to... DMs uh, that tell me what a hot girl summer is. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then uh, we do a bunch of other stuff too. So like we have another yeah. podcast, a Fugitive Frames film podcast, where uh, we actually prefer- recorded our first commentary track for it. So yep. that'll be coming out a bit soon. And then uh, we also do oh, it's just a fucking song. Never mind. <laughs> what? It's just a song. Wait, I don't understand. Hot Girl Summer is just a song. No, uh, no, it, it's a state of mind, dude. <laughs> <laughs> is this what you were looking up the entire episode? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was so quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to. I had to He's know. Like, what is? I need to know. I need to read everything there is about Hot Girl Summer. Oh my uh, god! It's a state of mind, <laughs> dude. It's like it's like it's like Yolo, bro. Hot Girl Summer, dude. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have, we have the the film podcast and yeah. um, also our YouTube channel, uh, Fugitive Games. We we do let's plays and live streams and stuff like that. And you can find all of that just by going to fugitiveframes dot com. But yeah, uh, thanks for joining us. Next week we're going to go over a matter of honor. But until then, stay safe, everyone. We'll see you next time. Take care, Bye. everybody. Bye. Hot girl summer, yo. Yeah.